And we're back, everyone, for more Song of Tara, the last hour of tonight's session. Yes. So we just had a mad face storm the building. What <laughs> happens? Uh, Aura puts on his most innocent expression, which isn't really saying that much. And, and then he, he puts his, his hands to his chest and, and raises both of his eyebrows and goes, I would never, I just had to make sure you got here in a hurry because these young people are friends of odd. That actually makes her let, you know, she lets go and she grits her teeth and she nods at all of you before looking back to, to Aura. She narrows her eyes and says, Make sure you look into your boots before you put them on from now on, you wanker. Just make sure you look. You cut out. Hello. 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 And then she turns around and looks at all the rest of you and, and, uh, and smiles. Wonderful. A very strange smile, but it's there nonetheless. So your friends of odd. Um, we were. Were. Yeah. Oh dear. What's uh, that supposed to mean? Odd is um, take a seat. <laughs> Taryn, who <laughs> behind her, like tried to close the door carefully. So, well, odd is dead. I get the impression it's... that the cord isn't spreading word that quickly. I don't. Attend court most of the time. What happened? That's what well, we're. Yeah, go on. That's actually what we're trying to find out. What do you know so far? He was attacked uh, and killed in his apartment? Uh, presumably by black spiral dancers. We have um, a name of Kenneth Mac... I hate that name. McAlpin. Kenneth McAlpin. Kenneth McAlpin and a possible link to a, another spirit of the McAlpin name. I see. You know anything that could help us? Some. A little bit. I know that she's, you can actually hear her, her, her voice breaking and her eyes are getting moist, to put it mildly. Hey, hey, take a moment. Taryn hands her a handkerchief. She takes it. She blows her nose in a most unladylike fashion. <laughs> it actually does sound a little bit like somebody just blew a um a uh, a, a trumpet <laughs> <laughs> but what kind no sorry just <laughs> no a, a tenor in her case uh she um she she looks uh, absolutely devastated uh he i i know that Oh, feck it. She said, what the fuck? Why? What, what could anyone have to gain by killing Odd? He's it's, just a, he's just an old, an old geezer. Sorry to tell you this, but it's a way of life for us. <sighs> Shit. And, uh, um, they might, they might have been striking at the people he were with, was with. I see. I see. Well, you were looking for someone of the McAlpin family. I know where one person is living, or staying, I should say, it's not living, but staying, who is involved with someone of that name, that's all I know. But I have... <sighs> oh, shit. I, I have a, a name of someone at a, um, a hotel. You can go and talk to. Who might be involved? Who might be involved? Okay. Uh, his name is uh, is uh, Albert. 
Albert Humphrey uh, Delaney. And he's, uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, coffee. Thank you. He's, he's staying at, he's staying at a hotel up in Finn Glass. It's just a small place. But let me write down the address. He's, so what, he's, your relationship to this person? I don't really have one. All I know is that he's there and that he's working for someone, uh, or with someone called McAlpin. I know that because they, he tried to get in touch with me. Really? I don't know who he is or why he wanted to get in touch with me. I haven't been able, able to go and actually see him. That's all I know is I got told that there was an interest in my skills from this Mr. Delaney and that he was staying at that hotel up in Finn Glass. Mind if, mind if I ask, just so we might be able to put something together, what would those skills be? A bit of this and a bit of that. See the car outside? Hmm? I built it. Scrappy. Not the car. Mm. Taryn looks impressed. Well, thanks a lot. <coughs> we, we can definitely go and check this address out. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I... I... If See this bastard has anything to do with it... <sighs> Trust me. Benia... More than he, four of ours, were killed last night. There's plenty of justice or vengeance or retribution to be enacted upon whoever did this. Yeah, whoever did this has invoked the fury of the Garou. Oh, we, we much, 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 as I, much as I know that the fury of the Garou is an impressive thing, trust me. If you let me have him... He'll still be screaming a thousand years from now. <sighs> if he's involved in this. We'll consider it. If you leave him to us, he won't be able to. Thanks very much for your, uh, for your assistance. You guys got anything else you need to get out? Because I'm fresh out of ideas. Um... No, just that I'm sorry to be the bearer of ill tidings. Someone has to do it. She she, she takes out a, a a small business card, hands it over to uh, to Shiva, and says, "When you have time, and you have more to tell me, come and see me, and tell me the whole story." I've known Odd for twenty years. She doesn't look like she's a day over 20, incidentally, but that's what she's saying. I've known Odd for 20 years, mm. and he was one of my best friends. I, no, 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 no. Whoever did this to him has to die, and they have to die hard. Condolences. They will. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure to, um, to involve you. Thank you. I think Aaron also, steps over and holds the door open. Yes, and the last thing, if you're all leaving, well, you are all leaving, I guess, what you hear as you are on your way out is... Um, I sorry? had... Oh, it's just, I'm going to pay before I leave. Oh, oh, Same I, with I, Aaron. Sort, I sort of assumed so. Yes. I did, I yeah. did so too. So. Yes. Good, good. Just to mention it. That's yeah, sure. a good point. It's a good point. But as you walk out of of the place the last thing you hear before the door closes behind you is a the unmistakable sound of someone being slapped hard and then you hear aura's voice going ow yeah the, the butt pinch is not a, a move a consoling move um i think i um I text Kiwa what? just so she has my number. Yes. It's just like, hey, this is Shiva, here's my number. Yes. I am going to take a short bio break and the rest of you can make your plans in the meantime. Alright. So, 
what is the plan? I'm assu- I'm saying the plan is we go to the hotel, we wreck shit. Um, if the guy is not there, we find out where he is and then wreck shit. And uh, later in the evening, we go see the mages. Yeah, I'd say we go to the hotel and get information. And possibly, if needed, wreck shit. Yeah. I mean, if he's there, shit is going to get wrecked, but information will be extracted in the process. Yeah, but I mean, if he's, I don't know, another victim. Hmm. Look, I know, I know, uh, we all, we all want to just rip everything asunder, but if we happen to accidentally kill someone important who knows something important, we might never be able to solve this. So yeah, we need to not jump the gun on this. I agree. Mm, exactly. So I guess we strike with tempered claws. Hmm. Aaron gives you an approving nod. Taron remarks very quietly. He had that slap coming. Ugh. Yeah, what a creep. Yeah. He touched okay. me. Yeah. He did what? He want put his to, arm around her. Want me to break them? Oh, please don't. Oh yeah, Fenner, That reminds me. You you do know that that he has a, a a tendency to drain people completely, right? As in, That's you are exhausted the next day in a supernatural way. I mean, just like, you know, because we need you for this, so don't go out and get fucked, silly. Just go out and fucked, I guess. Fenner just has it look like she's not even going to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So when he put that arm around me, yeah. Again, I, I need, I'm just I'm being very sincere. Do you want me to break those arms off him? No, you'll get greasy. <laughs> Besides, as much as as much as we may just feel uncomfortable with him, we must keep the peace between our two species. If we're responsible for any incident, even if we feel justified, it will come back to bite us in the arse. I I wouldn't dream of breaching political protocol. I was just talking like a a normal and completely understandable scuff between two people who disagree on something, and one of them happens to rip the arms off the other. It happens, right? (sighs) Firstly, Aaron Um, says this with kind of like, with with a a glint in his eyes, but, uh, yeah. No. Is is is, is response is just to say no. <laughs> Aaron shrugs committed. Like, yeah, okay, I can. Man, I always feel so bad when I deliver news like that. Bad things. Oh, as happen. if anyone feels good doing that. No, I think some people do. <laughs> no, I mean. I'm sure the leeches would love it. I just mean, I don't know. It's it's bad enough if it's regular people, but these. I mean, I still remember the look on uh, Miela's face. It's just... Yeah. Yeah. They seem very uh, passionate, very emotional. There's a lot of history here that has come before us, things that we are not even privy to. We might find out, but for now what matters is that you have taken the responsibility on you to deal with this, to be the bearer of these news, and you're doing a good job of it. Still up a lip. Hmm, yeah, uh, she um, you know puts her hand on his shoulder briefly and says, uh, "And thanks for the help um, with the questions." My pleasure. I'm sorry if I seemed impatient. I'm. Yeah, you were. No, no, I get it. You don't like the competition, she says, <laughs> and keeps going. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron doesn't respond. Like he, he's he's clearly like he's he's uh, taken aback by that. Like, huh? What? Uh? <laughs> and then he follows on in silence. Yeah. Taliesin um, follows up uh, Shiva, uh, goes up to her and says very quietly, I do appreciate everything you're doing for us. If I know you probably already know this, but if you do want to ever talk about any of this and just you know get something off your chest, please, I'm always there. Um, she looks at him and says, 
I think I'm going to quite literally cry a river, but that can wait until we're done. So I know, I know. Thanks for the offer, and yeah. likewise. The last thing I want to see was I don't know you getting burned up by vengeance or something. <laughs> Silence. Do we have our storyteller back? We do. Wonderful. She's just listening in. Yes. I think we mean to head to the hotel in question. Okay. You are heading up uh, to Finglass, which is here. Yeah. Oh. I actually make sure, like, to basically stop by near the green, get my car, and then drive us up there. So we're not reliant on public transport if we need to get out in a hurry. In that case, Sheila suggests we stop by we stop by Mary's place so she can change her outfit. Sure. But it, she also understands if there's no time. I don't think we're we're lacking for time, so I mean, let's just stop by and then we go because, back to Thin Glass. Yeah, because she borrowed Finna's outfit and then we slept at Taryn's house, so she's not she's still wearing the same outfit. <laughs> Getting a, a, and it's still not hers. A bit gamey. Yeah. Yes. You could borrow some clothing, but Taryn's kind of teat. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. So then we go to Finglass and the hotel. Yes. <clears throat> cough, cough, so cough. this person was. It wasn't an acquaintance of Kiva's, was it? It was just something she, someone she knew of. Yes. Yes. Someone who needed Kiva's help. Yeah. Somebody who had contacted her and said uh, that that they needed her skills. Uh, in that case, I think in the car, uh, as we're about to arrive, Shiva suggests that since it's a hotel, we probably need to, you know, I need to speak to this person, and then we say that he was looking for him. That seems right. Uh, uh, so could someone, everyone kind of try and, and fidget with your microphone jacks for a moment and see if uh, we can make that now? No, it's gone now. It's gone now. Cool. Yeah, I heard it too. Sounds- yep, I heard it as well, but it's gone now at least. Cool. Okay, so your suggestion was what approach? Um, the sneaky one where one of us lies and says we're Kiva in order to gain access to his room, and then we can, I don't know, threaten him or whatever. I've come to be of the impression that we have a very reliable liar among us. Who? Aaron tilts his head to, to Fenna. Oh, I've known you to spin a yarn or two. I'm really more, better, much better at making the truth seem like a lie than a lie seem like a truth. That's confusing. So wait, if you lie and say your keyword, you could make that sound like the truth. That's just what we need. No, I can make the truth sound like a lie. She can say she is who she is, and then people don't believe her. Oh uh, well, then I am. Um, the sky is blue, and could, people no don't believe it's blue. Then could you just go in there and say that you actually have no legitimate business with this guy, and they'll they they absolutely won't believe you, and they'll let us in? I'm not sure that would work. Don't worry, I I guess I can lie if I have to. The gifts of spirits are fickle and weird. <laughs> <laughs> Taryn, can't you hack the system or something to figure out which room he's in? That would be useful. Taryn, Crocs, of course I can try. We could also go up to the reception and ask if there if the guy is here, and then ask which room he's staying in because we mean to go up and see him. If this, I, um, the hotel we're going to isn't like a, a big fancy hotel, right? It's just like a normal place. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a smaller. Yeah. Thank you. In that case, it's probably not going to be like high grade security and be like, oh no, we absolutely cannot have you harassing our guests, right? It's probably going to default to the assumption that, oh, you have business with this person who is uh, visiting. I guess I'll just tell you where he is then. Uh, yeah, I, I guess we'll just go to, uh, the reception. I, I think it's quicker anyway. Uh, and don't worry. I, I'll, guess I'll take care of it. I th- I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll just step in and just stay a little bit in the back, so so you don't scare them. I don't know, Joan. Tell tell me something. Um, assuming like that, we've kind of been out on town before, uh, and assuming that we've been a, a pair of punk kids at at one time or another, because we probably have. 
uh, like in a in a hypothetical situation where Aaron and anyone else would go up to a desk and start talking to the guy, would Aaron's presence and, and unsettling presence basically like make the guy more inclined to be like, yeah, sure, whatever, just just I let I just, just go away. Either that uh, that that may happen sometimes. Other times they will be like, no, 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 I can't, no, no, go away. All right, so but but that in that case it wouldn't be something I couldn't fix by leaving. Usually, yeah. Okay, in that case, I think Aaron will will actually. Uh, never mind what I said before. He will just go with you and see if the unsettle the shit out of the Porsche approach works. Yes, and if, um, if not, then you know he can always back off. So, what, what was the name we were looking for? Uh, you mean the 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 guy that the you're guy. looking for? Yes, uh, his name. Ah, <clears throat> uh, cooperate here. His name was Albert Humphrey Delaney. Well, I actually wrote it down because brain neck. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um. Well, I guess we enter. Yes. Well, you get there. It is a small uh, hotel, as I said. It's not exactly first class. In fact, when you get in there, you realize, or get to it, you realize it's more like fifth class. Huh. It's dingy, to put it very politely. It's, uh, it's, it's what? Dingy. Mm. It's just like a it's place dingy. you can rent by the hour. It's, it's, it's dingy. I've never heard, dingy, I've never heard yes. of a hotel described as a small, uh, a small oh, right. boat. Oh, you're right. No, it's dingy, but it's, it's horrible. Okay, it's, yes. uh, it's, uh, you, 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 uh, it's, it's not, it's not particularly clean. It's not particularly, uh, um, orderly. It's, it's actually quite, um, filthy, really. In other words, it's basically the classic World of Darkness uh, part, sort of hotel. Okay. Yeah. Who's who's manning the reception today? There is a um, there is a uh, a man in his uh, in his fifties um, who's uh, who's sitting behind the the counter. Uh, he is uh, he looks like he's sleeping. He's uh, he's snoring a little bit. That's a pretty good indication. <laughs> um, he would look kind of kind of uh, friendly, uncle like Lee thingy, if it wasn't for the fact that he also looks uh, unwashed and he smells quite bad, even from across the the um, the counter. I want to ask something, since he seems to be sitting there sleeping. Mm -hmm. Is it feasible that? Fenner could, being a very stealthy member of our group, could just reach over the counter, turn turn the guest book around, flip through it, and find the guy we're looking for without us actually having to interact with the uh, with this old man. He, yeah, she could try. Fenner doesn't really want to get that close right now. Thanks. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, unless you suggest I, I, I'm, that. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure Fenner doesn't even need to get close to sniff him. No. You if can you smell him from. To. Yeah, exactly. You you just got heightened senses for. Yep. You can smell him from the door. Yeah. Is there any way we could um, determine whether or not the bad smell is in any way just him being unhygienic, or if there's actually some? No, he's unhygienic. He uh, Fenna has a distinct sense that this man has not discovered what uh, toilet paper is, and he doesn't. Yeah. And he doesn't know what he doesn't know what clean underwear is either. Um, Chris, yeah. and I want to ask you because I'm curious. Were you about to ask if the bad smell is us getting an unsettling feeling about this dude? Something along those lines, yes. Uh, okay. In that case, I I would um, perhaps like just to to clarify how I believe this to work. And you, Joan, by all means, yes, say yes, if I'm wrong. Sorry. If that was the case, Joan would uh, normally either ask for a uh, a primal urge check from you, or uh, yes. you would have to have the gift sense worm. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Fair enough. Fair enough. No, he is he is just a dirty, uh, filthy individual sitting behind the counter in a dirty, filthy hotel. Uh, fair she enough. Like she doesn't want to go over there. Because Shiva? it's smelling bad. Who? Shiva? Shiva. Oh, no, Shiva marches over there and wraps on the counter. Yeah, the, the second Finna walks through the door, she just makes a big point to stay into. Just walk, walk to the other end of the room, of the oh, foyer, no. just staying away. Yes. Well, Aaron follows. 
Yeah, Aaron flanks uh, she won. Yes. Well, a um, as you as you wrap on the counter, a uh, a door opens uh, behind the counter, and a uh, a woman in her early twenties comes out. She at least looks like she knows what uh, what a shower is. Uh-huh. Um, she just still looks. Let's just say she's not exactly dressed as you would normally find a, a, a find in a in a hotel reception area. But this is a rundown. Every place. day is casual Friday. Every day is very casual Friday. Yes, but she uh, she looks at all of you and and nods. Um, Unsettled or not? Because un- again, this is something that in Aaron's book constitutes cause for suspicion. No, it's she's just a young woman. And she, um, she, uh, says, well, what can I do to help you? Um, you have an Alfred Humphrey Delaney living here? Albert. Well, she says, I, I can either confirm or deny who we have living in, in, in this place at any given time. I mean, our guests value their privacy. Well, we were told to meet him here, so I assume he's living here. All right. Well, who may I say it is? Kiva. Okay, fair enough. She says, and um, and she picks up a, a, a telephone from behind the counter, dials, and goes, um, uh, "Mr. Delaney, uh, there's a, a young woman down here with some friends. She says her name is Kiva. Something you is it something you are in any way uh, familiar with?" And she nods and listens and says, well, she says, and puts the phone down. Mr. Delaney is on the first floor, last door on the right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then she lamashes off. Yes. Um, He's on the first floor. We might as well take the stairs. There's no need to take the lift. Yeah. True. Well, Don't want to get up. caught in that when it breaks down. Well, you get up to the first floor find a, a, a hallway where it quite frankly looks like someone nobody has brought a, a, a um, nobody has brought a, a Hoover to this place for a long time mm. so uh, as, as we're walking closer to the door uh, Aaron kind of looks from from himself and to Connell and just mouths generally to everyone. I say when he opens the door, you and I make sure he doesn't go anywhere, and then we ask him what's up. Yeah. Well, you are on the first floor, it should be said. One of the doors, as you walk past it, you know, all all doors in any hotel you will have. First floor, they all start with one. Second floor, they all start with two, and so on and so forth. You walk past the door on the right-hand side, where the number on the door says 237. Just as my own small homage, and if any of our listeners understands that, then good. Very what? Okay, so a reference has been dropped. Yes. Do you get bonus XP if someone gets it? <laughs> no, because you can look it up on the internet, so you don't. Okay. That's just... Okay. Well, well uh, just checking if Connell like, seems to agree that this is something we do. Connell nods. Good. She balls are nuts, by the way. Mm. Yes. I think just Aaron stands on the left side of the door, so he is, he can't be seen. Is there a door spy in these, uh, is there, mm, there a yes, glass yes, in them? Yes, yes, yeah. there is, there is. He stands on the, like, on one side of the door, assuming Connor right. stands on the other. So he yep. basically can just ambush the guy when the door's open. Yes. Yep. Well, you, you knock on the door, I assume. Yes, you knock on the door. There is a voice from the other side. Come in! Um. I guess Shiva hesitates for a moment and looks to the guys like, do you want to go in first? Oh, by all means, just open the door. We'll take it from there. Uh, then she goes in. I, we, follows, uh, we follow after her. <laughs> look, look, look for a guy and want to hold him down. Not to hold him down, but grab him by the arms at least. Make sure he doesn't make for the fire escape or something like that. Oh, they're frustrated after Aura. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they must be. They must feel their masculinity have been somehow challenged. Yep. Uh, that's the, she was theory. <laughs> <laughs> the um, he you you walk in and you see a a man. Um, he gets off uh, out of his chair. 
and he smiles politely and uh, seems a little surprised that there are so many people. But, but on the other hand, the woman down in the reception area did say that there was someone who said she was Kiva and who had brought some friends. Yeah. And he he uh, smiles in a, in a fairly you know polite kind of way and and says, um, "Well, welcome." I just immediately walk up to him and like do the uh, grabbing a person under the arm thing, like if with that when you have two people doing it, you basically have a really good grip on a guy. It should probably also be added that there is absolutely no question that this is the man from the drawing. Wonderful. Oh. <laughs> yep, that's what's happening as far as Aaron's concerned. Just grabbing the dude. Yep. What? What? what what's, go what's going on? What's? Why? Stop that! Why? Stop being so roughhousing. Um. Could you close the door, Aaron? Aaron closes the door. Yeah. Uh. I must apologize for the roughhousing. Um. But I'm afraid we're here to ask you some questions. I'm sure you are, but but is there any reason to be this this violent about it? We don't know yet. Really, young people. I have done nothing to you. Shut up and answer her questions. Um, we are looking for a McAlpin. Yes. Specifically, well, either Kenneth or Winda McAlpin. Well, I am looking for Winda McAlpin as well. Oh, it would seem we're aligned in our interests then. Clearly, can you guys let go of me now? Um, I think Shiva does like a put him down sign, but also it doesn't stay around. That depends. Are you going to run for the nearest fire escape? I don't think I would get very far. Besides, no. you just said that I, we, we are both looking for the same person. Hmm. I think you can put him down. Aaron? I don't mind. Connell, let's go on the man. Yeah, we Thank play. you. Lower Thank him you. onto the floor. Thank you. My goodness. Again, I must apologize for the rough treatment, but we have reason to suspect that, well... Anyone could be dangerous. Well, I suppose anybody in the world could be dangerous, but but really, you need to start answering questions, sir. So. Yeah, I'd be happy to. But what are the questions? Well, what can you tell us about Winda Magalpin? I can tell her that, or I can tell you that she is a young woman of. Uh, about 17 or 18. I think she must be 18 by now, actually. Um, she is physically attractive. She's blonde. Um, she, when she was young and wild, as kids do, and I mean younger and wilder than she is now, she got tattoos around her neck and shoulders. Um... Other than that, she's clearly a very confused young woman. Why do you want to talk to her? And because what if you find out about her location? Because her family misses her. Okay, and? Well, I am here on their behalf to ask her to come home. And the location thing? Uh, Edinburgh, Scotland. Why did you run away from home? Well... <sighs> I hate to say this, but why does anyone run away from home? Half the time, I'm pretty sure they don't know it themselves, and at least I can say her parents don't know why she did. Got any leads on her location? Uh, yes, Dublin. <laughs> Unfortunately. That about <laughs> it looked like I'm about to slap him upside the head. And but that is about <laughs> as close as I've gotten. I, I was told that... Um, a Kiva O'Shaughnessy would be able to possibly help me, and I've tried to locate her, but I don't think any of you fit the description I was given of Miss O'Shaughnessy. Let me ask you, Joan. Um, we were told that this dude had been in the candy store and had talked yes. on the phone 
to yes. or about this girl? Yes. About. About. About this girl. Yes. Okay. Um, don't worry. Uh, Kiwa sent us here, so. What well, do you need her help for? If Miss O'Shaughnessy sent you, I I'm, I'm, must say that she's got some strong friends. I need her to help me find this girl. I'm told that, that she knows a lot of different people in this city and that these people might be able to, I don't know, keep an ear to the ground or something. You know, I am not a private eye. I'm not a detective. I don't, you know, I, I have to go by the few leads I have. Did she well, know you were going to contact her about this? Uh, Kira? Hmm? I would imagine that nobody knows that they are going to get contacted until they get contacted. If, uh, if you're not a private eye, who are you then? I am a friend of the family, a very long time friend of the family, uh, of, of, uh, of the McAlpins. We've been told that Winda speaks a strange language. Yes, she speaks, she speaks Gaelic. But she doesn't speak English? Well, I believe she speaks English. I don't know why she would only speak Gaelic, especially since the variety of Gaelic she speaks is Scottish and would probably not be understood very easily in, in Ireland. That's what I've heard. That's just a guess. I mean, I don't speak either of the two versions myself. Which of the McAlpin family are you in contact with, or which of them are in contact with you? Uh, which of the... Oh, you mean uh, which of well, her parents? Their names? Uh, uh, <sighs> Kenneth and Miranda, if you must know. Okay. And you have no leads on her location, though. No, none except that she's somewhere in Dublin. Okay. Or at least that was the last place anyone saw or heard from her with any certainty. Okay. I'm going to make a call, guys. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Aaron picks up his phone and uh, he calls uh, one of the number he has. He has, doesn't have the number saved up. He knows it, he has it from memory. Yes. He calls, uh, he calls Kathleen Quinn, one of his contacts. Yes. Well, you call, and she picks up the phone on the other end. This is the one from the Garda, isn't it? Yep, she's yeah, the assistant so. commissioner. I thought so, yes. Uh, Quinn speaking. Hey, Kathleen, it's uh, it's Aaron. Pleased to talk to you. What can I do for you today? Likewise. Um, yeah, so I'm looking for a girl, uh, and I was wondering if you, if anyone had observed her, if she'd gotten in trouble. Right, what's her name? I can look her up. Her name is uh, Winda McAlpin, but she's been running. She's run away from home, and she might be going under a different name. She's blonde, uh, uh, s described as a physically attractive woman. She has tattoos on her neck, and she might be speaking Gaelic. She might be. All right. Does this fit any description? Do you got anyone in your drunk tanks or something? <laughs> uh, I know for a fact that we only have men in the drunk tank right now. Uh, though that is by no mean always the case, I will look up in the system to see if we have anything on a McAlpin, or she looks up and is like, no? No, I, I think we don't have anyone under the name McAlpin, but I'm looking for women who have been... Uh, what age is she? That what would age? help. I, like Aaron just puts the phone to his shoulder and asks out in the room, what age? She's she's 18. 18. Oh, okay. Uh, she says, well, that does make it, I suppose, a bit easier. That's a young age to be tattooed. Kids nowadays. Don't I know it? Yes, 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 I'm sure you do. <laughs> she um, she looks and, and searches and says, no, we, we don't have anything in our database about anyone who fits that description. Okay, since she's run away from home, could you cut me some leeway here and maybe put out an APB on her? Have some have the wagons look out for her? Yeah, certainly. Thanks a bunch, Quinn. Yeah, oh, no oh, problem. 
Aaron, Aaron. Yeah? One moment, Quinn. Maybe ask her about our gentleman here. Well, sure. Why don't you add it? Do you have anything on? And then he rattles off the, the description of the dude in the room. Albert Humphrey Tilly. Who, who uh, smiles in a, a friendly kind of manner to uh, when, when you speak of him. And and she says, uh, well, let me just look. No, nothing except that he came through. Uh, he he came through Dublin Airport uh, four days ago, and he, I see here that his his passport was was uh, registered at that point. Why has something happened to the man? Oh, not at all. Actually, he's in the best of health, as far as I'm aware. Okay. Uh, well, no, not, nothing on him at all. Thanks a bunch, Quinn. I owe you one uh, for the APB thing. <laughs> one amongst 50. <laughs> no problem. I think you'll recall, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, never mind. You know, you have a good one. Thanks. Yeah, you too. She hangs up. So? We got the cops looking for him. Discreetly. Oh, excellent. That That's very good news. Uh. What? Also, something I'd assume a friend of the family would have already had done. Or at least gone to the guard and asked them. Well, it's not as if I hope anything bad has happened to her, you know? Well, she's still a missing person. I suppose. But I was, I was going to try and talk to Miss O'Shaughnessy first. I mean, I had that lead. Why wouldn't I do, use that before I went anywhere else? How long has she been missing from home? Three months. That's not long. Did anything happen? <sighs> no, uh, apart from a blazing row with her, with her mother, which happens from time to time, I suppose, in most families. And she left in the dead of night, packed up a bag or two, and left. And her family have been very distraught about it ever since, and would like to have her back, obviously. Mm. Her, father is in, her father is in London right now, following up on another lead. Her mother, as far as I know, is in Glasgow. Uh, Sheila? Yeah? Uh, you got the contact information for... Uh the girl, Kiwa. Kiwa. Yeah. yeah. Could you call her and verify this? Like, if, if what he says matches up, or if if there's something out of place with what he's saying. As far um, as she knows. Sure, I'll call her. Thanks. But, Aaron, she never really talked with the guy. Yeah, that's what I kind of want to figure out. Because if she didn't, then this is a dead end. But if you are, but if this guy is lying to us. Why would he lie? Aaron shrugs. Aaron disturbs the man while she says this. She is clearly reading him, but discreetly. <laughs> yes. Aaron shrugs as if the reason he would lie doesn't really matter. It, the point is, if he does, then he's in for it. Actually, Joan? Yeah. Can I try to see if I can feel anything off about him? Uh, sure. Is that a thing you can do? Uh, well, you if you have the gift called uh, Sense Worm, you I can don't. use that to sense taint. I do not. Okay. There is a possibility you may be allowed to try and s uh, sense something supernatural about him with perception and primal urge. Yeah, that is uh, that is possible, I suppose. Uh, at this point, he's he's sitting at the table. He's he's clearly not happy about having these rather aggressive people in the room, and he, he's got his hands, he's got his head in his hands, basically. Suck so it, dude! You're an NPC in a werewolf campaign. Aggression is gonna be a thing. Yeah. <laughs> now that we are asking the storyteller questions, anyway. At this point, how close does Finna generally have to get to sniff people? Uh, not that close anymore. Not with your up uh, um, sense of scent. Mm -hmm. In fact, oh. please, please, Fenna of all people, please roll a perception plus alertness. Okay. 
Well, since you say Finna of all people, is it sub based? Yeah, it's it's that's exactly why I'm asking you. It's it's yeah. Okay. Um so what's the difficulty? It's too low. Yes, the difficulty would be five in that case. Okay. Use that sniffer. Ace it. Sniff 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 sniff. Is she rolling for a certain obstacle or is one success is qualifying? Uh, wow. 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 Yeah. Only success. Never mind. You can smell you can smell blood. Where's uh from him. Hmm. It's kind of hard to make out. It, it's kind of hard to make out because the whole place stinks. Mm. But it's there. Uh, sorry, and you said a- AJ. You said as if as is it's in him or on him. On him. <laughs> well, Finna sort of raises an eyebrow at him. Do the yoki. Yeah, yeah. He said, "I'm I'm all right for for the moment," but. He says, and and uh, he's still still just he's he's bent forward. He's got his his uh, he's put his his knees on or his elbows on his knees, and and he's uh, he's he's sighing basically quite heavily. Um, and he, uh, oh, yes, I'm all right for the time being, but have but, you been in trouble? Uh, well, I suppose I've, you could say that I'm, he says, and you can hear like a, a zipper opening. He says, you could say that I'm in the room with a group of six werewolves. Why wouldn't I be in trouble? He says, and stands up and you uh, st- this. And what? Can you see him? No, nope. no. See what? Okay, let me just try something else here. Just give me a second. I knew he was fishy. I sense a cliffhanger approaching evidently fast. Cliffhanger, you say? Oh, oh my. Yeah. Oh. Hello. Well, so then. the next time you apologize for, for, for the rough housing, please don't. So his transformation is not perhaps um, followed by some uh, like an action of his, or is he just standing up and unzipping his face and waiting around? It's followed by an action. What's he doing? Um, as he stands up and reveals that, then he opens his mouth, keeps opening it, and continues to open it. It's quite fast, really, but he is opening his mouth is to... Is there a chance that we can interact with this? Uh, Since you well, described it as really fast, I'm, I wanted to ask. Uh, can I at least curse? You can certainly curse when you see that, yes, but he does get the drop on people. Okay. So he he gets up and then he tries to bite one of you. In fact, he decides to bite Aaron. And yes, and I will do that next time we play. <laughs> I, I was hoping for you to say Connell. Why? Oh! Because Connell punched that real hard. hard. <laughs> yes, but I will do that next time we play because it is now five minutes to 11, so it's a perfect time to stop. We'll yeah. uh, so next time everyone return to more song at Tara for uh, to to get a look at the combat system of this game. Yes, World of Darkness combat is kind of fun. It's quick. It's quick. Uh, yes, it's a bit complicated, but it's fun. Yes. All right. So uh, I'll hold, I'll hold you to that. And you guys get three XP for tonight. Lovely. Ooh, Yay, actually, this this suits me really well because I would like to buy an advancement. Uh, which would that be? Um, based on um, uh, you said three, right? Yeah. Good. Based on the fact that Aaron is continuously and uh, continuously training and being very unforgiving about his physical uh, his physical aptitude, yes. I would like to increase his brawl. Uh, sure. 
Thank you. Not a problem. What does that take it up to? Four. Yeah. Thanks a bunch. Probably get a point in brawl at some point. Yeah, <laughs> that would be six points, obviously, to get it up there. Correct. Would um, since we talked about that uh, not so long ago, would this be a too early a point to begin thinking about totem? No, it wouldn't. I mean, you just spend the points whenever, really. Then Joan will weave it into the story. Yep. In that case, uh, was it two points? Yes. Mind if I do? Go ahead. Two points per dot. Well, I only have one dot. Yes. Okay. Now I have two. Uh, I'm going to follow suit on that, I think. Yes. Right. right. If it's two points, <clears throat> is it two points per dot you already have, or per? It's two points per dot. Have? It's two points per dot. When it's so it'll uh, be four that it costs for Asmus, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm. No, no. Rasmus has one point already, and he wants another dot. So that's just if... it. Just costs two points. Uh, if... Flat. It's a yep. flat rate. So whether you have three oh. dots or no dots, it's two dots together. Oh, okay. Okay. I get it. I just bought one point of it. Yep. So, um, how much do we have? We have five. And we need six. And we need one more to get Liffy. D- did we agree on Liffy? Hey, uh, uh, yeah, by the way, everyone, uh, I, I, I uh, as, per, as per normal uh, werewolf play, uh, we're talking out of session and like as players about what totem spirit we would like to acquire, and then we will attempt to acquire it in game. So that's why we're talking about Liffy now, is because she is a spirit we would want to recruit for our totem. And yes, oh, hello. Oh, we would like to have her recruit us. Yes. Mm-hmm. When we listed what we would want as a totem, Liffy won <laughs> by a <laughs> life fight. <laughs> well, yeah, everyone but Daniel had Liffy as the first priority, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I'm a big rat fan, so you can't really blame me. Oh, rat is cool. Shall we? Uh, is the recording ended? Shall we spit our no, audience it's, good the, the, it's definitely not re- ended. We we're actually just talking XP use now. So yes. Okay. So maybe we should end the. We can we can end the call here and then uh, yeah and then Absolutely. see people see people next time for more of this it campaign. Like a great idea. <laughs> You've been enjoying a song at Tara. Remember to check in next time for more. Until then, bye. 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 bye.